Hello everybody, welcome to Big Boy Variety. You already know who I am, the host of this channel, the number one channel for sports analysis and rants, um, nerdy stuff, you know, all that good, all that good stuff. And so we're here today to talk about week two of the NFL season, the preview for week two is going to be interesting and we start off with Thursday night football of course you know um, a thing that honestly for the most part shouldn't exist but it exists anyway and we start with an AFC North rivalry with the with the real you know the real battle of Ohio you know and it's going to be Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns battle be at 8.30 Eastern, 7, you know, Central. So, 7.30, around that time. It's going to be very interesting to see both these teams came off a loss. The Browns rather, rather terrible in their loss last week. The Bengals just did not get the luck they needed. They should have, you know, at least tied the game with the Chargers, but they've just... Couldn't because NFL kicking is so bad already through the first week of the season. Um, but this should be an interesting matchup. This year, I will be watching Thursday Night Football along with Monday Night Football. Um, the last um, the last few years, ever since you know Thursday Night Football became a thing, I have not watched it since um, a Cowboys game that appears on Thursday night or Monday night. But this year... Um, because we're so football starved, I'm going to try my best to watch Thursday and Monday Night Football as well. You know, it's going to be an interesting ride. You know, we got new, we got a, a new trio that debuted last night, and I think they did all right. You know, for you know Monday Night Football, the announcers anyway. I'm talking about Lewis Riddick, um, Brian Greasy, and Steve Levy. I'm talking about those three. Um, and I did all right. Uh, hopefully, I mean, there was some stuff on Twitter, but, you know, hopefully uh, this team actually lasts a little while, you know. I mean, who knows. But then we get into the Sunday slate. Of course, we got, you know, a lot of interesting matchups that should, you know, raise the gauges a little bit. Some teams are trying to avoid going like 0-2, some teams trying to be 1-1, one one. some teams trying to stay undefeated. That's just part of the course when you're in the first two weeks of the season. So first up, we have the Giants and the Bears. And really, the most interesting thing here is can, can the Giants play some defense? Yeah, they play with a little bit of tempo uh, against the Steelers, but can they play some defense because they got overwhelmed late and Will Daniel Jones stop throwing interceptions that are terrible, you know? And the story of Mitchell Trubisky continues. Which Trubisky are we going to get? It just depends, you know? Next up, we have the Los Angeles Rams going on the road to Philadelphia, taking on the Eagles. And keep in mind, these are all the noon games, by the way. Um, so what in the world can the Eagles do on defense? How can they stop Jared Goff from... Throwing, you know, screens, outs, you know, slants and curls. How, how can they stop his short passing game? Because they pretty much got, you know, the Eagles defense has been decimated and injuries have played a part. And what, are, what in the world is Carson Wentz going to do? That offensive line needs help, needs a lot of help. If Aaron Donald gets around, you know, that offensive line of the Eagles, it's going to be another long day for Carson Wentz, let me tell you. Speaking of long days, I don't know how the Falcons are going to fare against my Dallas Cowboys. What a rare sight to see a noon game for the Cowboys. I love that. I love noon games for the Cowboys. It keeps the spotlight off of us for another week. But it should be very interesting to see. You know, we lost Blake Jarwin and Leighton Van Der Esch. Jarwin's gone for the season. Van Der Esch gone for at least eight weeks. And the Falcons... Probably need to improve their defense a lot because they got torched by Russell Wilson and his core of receivers. If if Dak gets 
all three of our receivers going, and then I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be another long day for the Falcons. Let me tell you that. So, Rudd CMC. Rudd CMC is going to run wild on the Buccaneers' defense, I think, if the defense can, can't get its act together. Tom Brady, you know, it, you know, if things keep going the way they've been going with Tom Brady, I, I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid he's going to have a, another long season himself, you know, because last year he didn't do great in his final season with New England. And this year has not started off right for him. He's already thrown another pick six, you know. So there's that. Um, you know, and that should be very interesting. I don't know which one of these other games are going to watch alongside the Cowboys game. I'm going to be completely honest because there's so much intrigue, so much interesting stuff going on, you know. Then we have the 49ers who are trying to bounce back. You know, George Kittle got hurt in the Cardinals game, and I think, you know, it might affect him a little bit. Again, I don't know I don't know which part of his uh, leg he got injured. I don't know if it was the leg or the ankle or, or, or the knee or something like that, but he got injured, and I'm going to tell you, Hopefully the 49ers don't get stunned again. It's the Jets. Sam Darnold just does not look like an NFL quarterback. He's honestly never looked the part. And the Jets' defense has not looked the part either. You know, I mean, the, just the Jets in general just don't look the part. You know, you know what I mean? So what will Drew Locke do? What will the Broncos do after suffering a devastating loss to the Titans on Monday night? They're going up against the Steelers down there at Heinz Ketchup Field, you know, and Big Ben, he's looking for another big day, let me tell you that, you know, if he gets, if he gets, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster going, I think, you know, I think this will look pretty, and you know, the Steelers have a good set of receivers, but the Broncos defense can be interesting, to say the least, they stopped Derrick Henry for the most part, yeah, sure, he yeah, sure, Derrick Henry almost ran for 100 yards, but, I mean, come on. The defense was suffocating for the Broncos. And if they suffocate, you know, James Conner and everything like that and force Big Ben to throw, it could be interesting to see what the Broncos could do against, you know, that run. And if the Steelers defense just continues to dominate with T.J. Watt and, and company, you know, it's going to be a long day for Drew Locke, I'm going to tell you that right now. So, I mean, the Titans defense really didn't get the Drew Lock, but the Steelers defense is a lot more powerful than that. Then we have the Jags and the Titans, you know, Gardner, Minshew. You know, we thought that the Jags were going to tank for Trevor Lawrence and stuff like that, or at least some other YouTubers thought that they were going to tank for Trevor Lawrence, but it's not happening. Gardner, Minshew's leading the show out there. And, you know, as long as things go well, I think... Everything will be fine. This should also be an interesting game to see what Derrick Henry can do and Ryan Tannehill, you know, John Smith. You know, I mean, those that offense for the Titans can be pretty potent when it gets going. But it didn't really get going against the Broncos. It did not at all. And the defense was pretty good, good enough at least, to keep the Broncos in check for most of that game. But, um, you know, again, it's Gardner Minshew. You know, he's a guy that's looking to prove himself. And if he can beat the Titans, he can prove himself in that game. Let me tell you that. And then next up, we have the struggling, always struggling, Detroit Lions taking on the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers and that whole crew of Packers wide receivers, you know. I mean... What can, what can you say? The Lions lost in a way that, that just signifies what the entire organization has been, you know? Just inept, inexcusable type of loss. You don't blow a 17-point lead. You don't drop a football in the end zone when you have a clear catch. The Packers scored 43 points last week, so, you know, if, if the if, if the if the four quarter lions show up, it's gonna be a long day. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And I didn't see the Packers last week, but you shouldn't give up 34 points either. So, you know. Um, and then we got the Bills and the Dolphins. Not really too much on my radar about this one right here. If Josh Allen gets going, 
you know, if Ryan Fitzpatrick throws interceptions, if, you know, I mean, it's just, it's very simple. Very simple game right there. Then, finally, to round out the noon slate, we got the Vikings, led by Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, taking on Phillip Rivers, who has thrown some terrible, terrible throws. Like, he's thrown some balls that have just looked god-awful. Like, I don't even know what in the world to think about that. And then you got the Colts and everything like that. So, uh, there's no Marlon back anymore. So, he's got to be here. So, what can the Colts do, you know? What can the Colts do against the Vikings? It should be an interesting matchup here, too, I think. Uh, but I'm probably not going to watch this game. I'm probably going to look around and see what else is my fancy for the noon slate. Then we get to the 3 o'clock slate and everything like that. The Washington football team. Yes, the Washington football team leads the NFC East. Shocking, I know. But everybody else lost if they won. And they're taking on Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. And I got to tell you, this is a pound-for-pound pound even matchup. You know? Very interesting matchup. Two young quarterbacks looking to prove themselves. And Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray. Two defenses that put the clamps down on two of the better teams of the NFL and the Eagles and the 49ers, you know. But I won't be watching this game at all. I'll keep my eye on it, but I won't be watching it because there are two games at 325 that are going to be some doozies. Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans going up against the Baltimore Ravens and the Chargers open up at SoFi Stadium. For their home opener against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh boy, these are gonna be two these are gonna be two games that I'm gonna keep my eyes on the entire time. These two are going to be the most interesting matchups out of week two. It's it's crazy how both of these matchups are just slated right here in, in, in the um in the second slot of games. Because, I mean, good God, you know, the Chiefs have been dominant, the Ravens have been dominant, the Texans have dominated the AFC South. And, I mean, th these three teams could probably run the AFC for a long, long time, you know, because, I mean, there's just so much talent at all three of these teams. And, yeah, the Chargers are opening up at SoFi Stadium, but, I mean, if Patrick Mahomes gets going, it, it could be a, either way for the ravens Texas game. If you get Lamar Jackson going or if you get Deshaun Watson going without, you know, any help, of course, because his receivers drop balls and his offensive line can't save, him, save his life. But um, both of these games are going to be interesting. And then, you know, before we talk about the big Sunday night game, the real game of the week, to be completely honest with you, we got the Las Vegas Raiders opening up their home stadium in Las Vegas against Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints, baby. And that one is going to be a fun matchup. You know, Drew Brees didn't really have to do much against Tampa Bay. Defense just dominated if the defense can get going. You know, I mean, it's just going to be. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to say the least. And then lastly, but not least, we got the Patriots and the Seahawks, a rematch of a Super Bowl from a couple years ago, a rematch of some great regular season games from Sunday night a couple of years back. And, boy, what a great way to end the Sunday. You know, Cam Newton taking on Russell Wilson. You know, Patriots defense, sure, they've lost a lot of pieces, but they did what they needed to do against the Miami Dolphins. And the Seahawks, I didn't see them against the Falcons last week, but notice the receivers that they got, DJ Metcalf, you know, boy, boy, let me tell you, it's going to be a real doozy again. It's going to be another one of those classic Patriots-Seahawks matchups that we are going to be used to seeing you know, every few years or so. So, that's pretty much going to do it here. 
We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.